Right, Gary, back at the training grounds. Uh, Pre-season training's fast approaching. Um, six new faces in so far. How, how pleased are you with where you are in terms of uh, recruitment so far? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pleased with the recruitment so far. I think that we've, you know, we're a couple of weeks or a week now before the start of training, and there's still a bit to do. You know, we've still got to bring, uh, I think, two or three players in. So I'm having a meeting with the chairman this afternoon. Um, we still got to do a little bit of work on the training ground here, um, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, all the all the words and and, and the, the talking will then turn into work and business, and uh, it'd be good to get them all in and, and get started and see all their faces together and see how they gel. Do you know what I mean, Russ? Yeah, Russ. I know, you, I know you've got a lot of uh, trialists coming in next week yeah. that you're going to have a look at. Are you, are you, you and Gary, going to be. Looking very carefully at them early in the week and see if you can invite a couple along. You know, hopefully a few along yeah. to uh, get involved with the first team. Yeah, that's the plan. We'll um, uh, get a game on the on Monday. Hopefully, uh, we'll get somewhere to play. Um, but uh, yeah, we're we're currently looking at places to play, and uh, we've we've got a good group of lads coming in. So um, we'll see how they fare and that, and uh, with a training session and and take it from there. So and then the, the first team boys are back on on Wednesday. Yeah, so what's the plan for next week then, Gary? First team players will be back in Wednesday. Will they have initial fitness testing or they just you know, straight into the hard work? Yeah, there's some have got to have medicals, but our physios have already sort of um, done their, their work in as much as that you have to get all the medical uh, stats from the other clubs they've been at uh, just to see their medical history. And, uh, and so they'll be having their uh, uh, medicals and everything subject to medical. So uh, hopefully they've not come. For, Back from Dubai with a twisted ankle or something, or a hamstring. Um, so and then uh, that'll be on on the Monday. And then obviously you have to dish out all the kit, and uh, we'll have to do the squad numbers and um, introduce ourselves. And really, the, the the big meeting of that day is is to let people know what it is as a group that we're looking to achieve. Um, and uh, and then you get the, you start work straight away. You know they're going to have a uh, a bit of a jog round, to say the least, and uh, we'll see if any of them have had too many sangrias and early. Um, and they'll be working morning, noon, and night if they have, if they're way behind the rest, because they were all told to come back, you know, nice and nice and fit and and ready to 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 play football straight away. You know, so there's no excuse for no one to come back with a pop belly and uh, you know. Heavy legs like Russ. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Russ, <I'm>, <laughs> <laughs> Russ you, uh, you came through Arsenal. Gary's brought in two Arsenal. young lads from he Tottenham. Um, yeah. You know, incredible club to uh, to come through and learn your football at. So these two young lads, one of them's had a taste of first team football. The other one, Jack Munns, is, is waiting for his first taste. So yeah. What are you expecting from them, having had a grounding like that, you know, a club like Tottenham? Well, I've seen uh, I've seen Jack play. Great ability. Uh, always wants the ball. Very brave. I mean, there's. Two sorts of bravery, you know, going around tackling people, which you can call bravery or not. Um, I think more braver to get on the ball and, and play and, you know, demand things off your teammates, which he looks like he can do. So he, he had a good, he made a good impression on us. Um, and uh, I've not seen so much of Jack, but I'm looking forward to seeing him for sure. Yeah, I've heard good things about him. Um, so, uh, you know, it, and, and if you've been at somewhere like Tottenham Arsenal or whatever, you've got to have something about you to be picked in the first place. Yeah. It's just whether you obviously, how will you develop on from there? And, you know where they see you. So, but they they must have had a good grounding, been there a number of years, and been at good clubs. Um, so, I'm looking forward to seeing them for, for sure. Do you know what I mean? None yeah. of you are there. <laughs> none, of, none of you are there anymore. Get over it. Yeah. You're here. Yeah. Yeah. Gary, number number, uh, yeah. number six is, is yeah, Jack Watford. Watford and Fulham and that, and you know any other big club. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just going to ask you about Jack Bartram, the latest uh, new signing. He, he's you know, everyone says you made a good impression at Swindon. There were other clubs interested. So, yeah. how, how are you, you know, persuading these players to come to Cheltenham? They've all spoken about how you've sold the club to them. They all know that you want to bounce straight back. So, what's it yeah. been like trying to recruit these lads who may have offers at a high level? Well, without blowing my own trumpet that Russell just did, <laughs> <laughs> or you did for him, um, I think. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> I think you have to, um, like I do my due diligence we do with the players so we check their history we check how many games they've played you know it might not be first team they might have had 50 uh, youth team games or reserve team games in all and you know that that player keeps himself nice and fit so we do our due diligence if you like and and 
The players that I like to bring you are the ones that I know have done this. And they've, you know, they've done their homework on me, on the club. Um, they, they listen to the chairman's talks on, on your, you know, CTFC stuff. And um, they're the ones that I know want to be part of a football club and are not just renegades coming in for a little while. Do you know what I mean? They, they, they need to know what they're coming in to because I think what we've got this year is a proper group with ambition. I think that's really, we got that group of lads that have been comfortable in, in the conference and uh, the next real sort of couple of signings, uh, we, we've, we've done Jack Munns and Jack Bartram and uh, we'll, we'll probably be out of the league and young ambitious lads that are looking to uh, improve their lot and if they can help Cheltenham improve their lot in the meantime then great. So I think he's probably worked out that um, uh, you know, working with me and the staff, there's more chance of success than maybe some of the other clubs. That's 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 me thinking for them. That's not me being big headed. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, Russell. I mean, you've been in and around for a long time, but this is going to be your first actual pre-season as as the first team assistant manager. And, and how, what's what were the key things for you to get out of? These early weeks of pre-season before the friendlies start building up, and you know you have regular matches. What for, as a team? Yeah, as yeah, you know, when you get well, the lads you out got, there. Yeah, you've got to build a bit a base of, of fitness, haven't you? You know that's important. Uh, get back to using the ball again as well. I think um, it's changed obviously from well, largely a lot of it's changed from 20, 30 years ago when we started doing pre-seasons. It was just running, wasn't it? 12, 12 yeah. mile runs and yeah. flipping, going over hills and through mud and all that. I think that's changed slightly. So. Um, you know, it's more related to what you actually do on the pitch and the movements and running and things. Obviously, you've got to have a decent amount of uh, aerobic endurance and anaerobic. So, just looking to blend it all in together, really, as one. And um, you know, obviously, the, eventually get them on the pitch and build up their game time over the six or seven games we got, so they're ready to go by the time of uh, start of the season. Yeah. You didn't used to uh, get a ball out for six weeks, nah. did you? No, nah, <laughs> pre-season. Yeah. No, you're right. you knew that you had to, however fit you was, yeah. coming back you knew you was going to be running yeah. but nowadays it's a bit more scientific and uh, it's specific training for specific individuals. Yeah, I know you're happy with the, the way the, the friendlies go, you finished with a really tough one at Wimbledon League 2 club just before the start of the season. Yeah. Are you quite keen to bring in the remaining players if you can, as early as you can in pre-season or are you willing to wait for a couple if they have to go a bit later on into pre-season? Well, that's probably what my discussion will be with the chairman today. You know, we I want to get the group I want in. I know the group I want in. I've spoke to everybody that you don't, you know, we haven't advertised that I've spoke to. And there's three or four that I still want to want to bring here. And uh, of course, with the budget, as the chairman said recently, it's, it's still a bit tight. But if you wait, you know, for, so, for someone to leave before you do that, then you, you'll lose that player. And I don't really want to do that. I feel that, you know, I've, I've got a group in my head because, you know, with all due respect, the club needs to go up straight away because of the funding for next year goes again. And you know, so, we, we, uh, as we've said, we've got to give it a right go. And uh, so I've got to say, well, look, this is the team that I think will compete at the top end of this league because that's all you can say. You can't say, you know, we're going to win it by 20 points because there'll be other teams that are working hard as well so but um, to give us the best chance I want to put it in front of the chairman and he, he probably won't thank me for publicising this before our meeting <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? yeah Russ I mean Gary, Gary knows all about the conference and you've played in it a lot so yeah. do you think it's going to be a lot different from the conference we saw last time Cheltenham were in it when you first came to the club yeah good question I think it is massively I think when we got promoted was it 16 years ago yeah. 99 there was probably one or two professional clubs. Now there's one or two that aren't. So the 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 landscape's changed massively. Um, we're aware of that. We won't treat anyone. You know, we treat everyone with respect, and um, we've got no divine right to win any games. But I think um, you know the mixture we've we've got and are going to get will we'll be will be you know we we would want to be up there. That's for sure. Um, yeah. So uh, and we'll be you know selling that in the boys to make sure that it's, uh, they fully aware of that. And the, the chats we've had with the boys, they've they're all. It does remind me quite a lot of um, the time before when it was lads who probably some had underachieved a little bit and wanted to have a, one last go at doing something and getting in 
um, and making a name for themselves and a little bit of five or ten minutes of glory in the league, So, which is what we had you know, yep. all those years ago. So um, hopefully we can instill that and give a mixture of youth and experience and um, get ourselves there. Yeah, Gary, I just want to ask about the, the players that you've made available but said there might be opportunities here. Um, has there been any developments with possibly players going out other than Trav who's obviously gone? Yeah, there's, uh, there's, there's been some interest in, in, a, in a couple of the lads, but um, you know they, 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 we, we put them in touch with, with, with the club and uh, then it, it's up to them to decide and their representatives whether they want to do that. Uh, I can only be honest with them. Sometimes the, the truth hurts. Um, sometimes they, they get a little bit disappointed and almost say, well, I'm staying here because they, they want to upset you, but I would have thought most footballers want to get out and play. So, you know, I, I treat everybody like I used to say when my son played with me, I treat them all like my sons and, and I want to help everybody. But when you've made a decision on somebody, on a player, for whatever reason, I believe you've got to tell them and, uh, and give them the option to go and get their football career on the go somewhere else. Yeah. And the final question I'd like to ask both of you is, um, do you want to play attractive football, ideally, but you, you're going to need to mix it up a bit in the conference, or is it? Do you think you can succeed in the league, you know, playing technical passing football, and or is it is it is it sort of a case of sometimes rolling your sleeves up and and fighting as well? I don't think we should pigeonhole ourselves. Uh, you know, you got the best two midfield players in England here, as far as ability is concerned, and uh, although he was at Arsenal. <laughs> um, and uh, so obviously we like to see good football but you know that's sometimes a five yard pass it's sometimes 10 it's sometimes 50 you know Glenn Oddle and Russ used to hit balls <laughs> over 40 50 yards they didn't say they were lumping it they were saying it was a quality long ball long pass so it's if you pigeonhole yourselves, you get caught out by the opposition because if you start rolling it out the full backs, giving it back to the keeper, he gives it the full. Nowadays, teams are shutting you down, and with all due respect to the National Conference, uh, National League, it, there's going to be some poor pitches. So you're going to get bubbles, you're going to get it stuck in the mud. So you have to adjust, and you know I think we both we both know the game that we like, which is you know that aesthetically beautiful game. Um, but if you won't win one nil, you pick up the three points, and that's important too. So we're going to try and be pleasing to the eye. The players that we've got are in our image a little bit. You know, we'll be teaching them, helping them as a team to play our our football, um, but not at the expense of uh, scoring goals. Yeah, Russ has a, an ex Arsenal player. Um, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't the Arsenal when I was there, <laughs> but it is now. <laughs> um, yeah, do you think it's a case of being able to adapt to what's present, you know, what's put in front of you? Yeah. And, uh, whether it's going to a smaller ground and on a difficult yeah, pitch yeah. and that sort of thing? Or... Uh, my thing to all, all players is play what the game tells you. Mm. If it tells you to lump it, lump it. If it tells you to kick someone, kick you know, within the rules of the game, do that. If it tells you to pass it, getting down, do it. You know, and the best players do the right things more often than not. So yeah. that's what I'll be instilling to the boys. There'll be some games we'll have to turn up and roll the sleeves up and tear that's for a you know, 95 minutes every other games where we can get it down and play. You just you just don't know. You have to do what the game tells you. We'll obviously try and set out a plan and the way it goes forward. But you know, how often does football, you know, <laughs> tear that up within five minutes, yeah. can't you? So it's. Um, I think we've got enough in the squad to. You know, there's a lot of experience and there are lads that are eager and willing to make their way in the game. So um, you know, that's that's what you know, like the manager said. We, we'd want to play great football. Yeah. Um, and that'll be our main intention with winning as well. Yeah. Right. Cheers, Ross. Cheers, Gary. Thanks Thank you. Cheers. And uh, if Jack Munns is listening, uh, <laughs> we apologise for uh, saying, do you know what I mean? <laughs>